ESCOM's ability to expand the electricity grid network in time. I'm joined now by energy expert Matthew Cruz. Now, he believes that by 2028, we could be sitting with stage seven power cuts. Uh, Matthew Cruz, thank you so much for joining us. So we've all been hanging on to this thing of it's just another 18 months. Things are going to get significantly better from the end of next year. Do you not believe that? Yes, well, thank you for having me on the show, first of all, and, and welcome to your viewers. Hello. Um, I do not believe that, unfortunately, as that 18 months is the 18 months that's been mentioned by Solor Ramaphosa previously. Um, so he mentioned last year, he said in 18 months there'll be no load shedding. He mentioned it in 2019, 2017, and 2015. But load shedding will be a thing of the past, and we'll forget about it. And what I see from my 11 years of experience inside ESCOM, um, advising the board and C-suites about the state of ESCOM, is that we are on a continual decline as a country in our ability to generate power. And that continual decline has been in place as a trend for the last 10 years and is going to continue for the next five years as well, as we are not putting any big, large-scale generating capacity online, but we're just taking a lot of capacity offline in terms of the coal power stations coming offline. Um, and yes, there is solar and wind coming, but solar doesn't really provide power in the peak in the evening in the morning, and wind is intermittent in nature. So we actually need to see a lot of generation um, storage that's coming um, online, but there's no real storage to speak about. Hmm. Talk to me about the grid, because we have heard before, and I've spoken to a number of people who've said, we need to expand our grid capacity. Um, so it's not, it's not exactly a secret, but the electricity minister spoke about this yesterday. He's been fairly upbeat that this will happen in due, due course. What signals did you pick up from him yesterday around where we are with the grid? So, yeah, one thing that picked up yesterday is that he confirmed that ESCOM is not in a position, unfortunately, to fund the grid expansion that is needed in order for us to get out of this energy crisis that we're in. And this is kind of like, it's not news to, to me and, and the experts, but it's kind of news that's being revealed to the public from ESCOM now, saying that we're actually kind of reliant on money coming from other nations, um, you know, investments into our transmission grid. As a country, we're not able to actually fund it ourselves. And that's very alarming in that we're kind of hoping for um, rich nations to, to provide us money, uh, grant money and, and conditional loans, as outlined in the COP26 Just Energy Transition Investment Plan. Um, they've, um, you know, the ANC government asked for 500 billion rand from rich countries to assist with our transmission expansion. And, you know, so far that hasn't really been coming at all. There's not been any large scale, you know, commitments to assisting us with our transmission grid. And without that, the CSIR pointed out that we're going to have load shedding for the next 10 years because our grid doesn't have the capacity to take any more generation capacity onto it, unfortunately. Look, at the same time, we are seeing the private sector jumping into solar to wind, seeing a vast opportunity. Um, so surely the same will be said with these big players who may help fund the grid. There, there must be a lot of money to be made in this. So surely it's just a matter of time before we see uh, the big players come in uh, and start to, to, to get on board. It's going to have to be the private sector or big development banks, surely. So, yeah, that's, that's a very good commentary that you're pointing out and that there is large-scale investments in solar and wind farms. And what's happening there is they're um, creating these contracts between the solar farm and then companies, uh, power purchase agreement for companies, for companies to purchase that power. But when we're talking about the grid itself, it's a very different story uh, relative to generation because the grid is still going to be always maintained and controlled by ESCOM. So it's always going to be a, a state-owned entity, tra ESCOM transmission that's going to be... Um, running the show in terms of where the power goes and, and what's going on with the grid. And unfortunately, that means that any investments into the grid will be going into investments within ESCOM transmission. And it's very difficult to separate investments in transmission from ESCOM itself. So you won't have a company that's able to come down and put a new grid down, for instance, because it all is tied to the national grid. So whereas you can get companies putting down large-scale um, solar and wind farms and selling the power, you can't really get large-scale companies coming down and putting transmission grids and then replacing the current national transmission grid and making money from that. And to add to that, they don't know what the price of electricity is from 2025 onwards because NERSA only dictates the price of electricity every two years. So what is the money to be made from investment into the transmission grid? Who knows? Because we don't know what the price of electricity is going to be. That's where we're stuck at the moment as a nation. 
It's a good point you make about the prices as well. Um, it's got to be attractive to the private sector. There's got to be some bang for their buck. We've actually seen recently um, with Transnet, there was an offering for public-private partnerships and no take-up, practically no take-up. They had to re-engineer the terms of that deal to entice the private sector. And, of course, you make the point that it stays within ESCOM. So bearing that in mind, that it's not that simple, it's going to take more time, um, you know, to, to get us stable. Do you really believe that we're going to go well past stage six? And if so, when? Because we haven't gone past, well, officially, let's just say officially we haven't gone past stage six. And actually, in the last few months, yeah. we've been doing pretty well. Uh, we know that that's due to the, the warmer weather, but things have been doing quite well, except for, you know, the last week or two. So, so give me your projection mm -hmm. for, say, the rest of this year in terms of stages and what you think is going to be happening. Great. So I uh, actually made a five-year projection at the beginning of January uh, regarding what's going on going forward for the next five years. And it's basically the doubling of load shedding going forward for five years. So whereas we had stage three on average last year as our average stage of load shedding, this year we've seen stage four on average. And the prediction is then by 2027, we'll have an average of stage six and then the next year an average of stage seven in 2028. So it's a doubling over the next five years of the load shedding going on and also the price of electricity. And that's why we always recommend for the individual, for the homeowner and the business owner to get a solar and battery installation for themselves. So they're not reliant on the government for electricity, but they can provide their own energy needs. Mm. So talk to me about why you, you feel it's getting worse, because yes, we know about the problems. Yes, and we've just heard that Coburg is not going to be fixed as quickly as everyone was hoping. So that's a significant chunk mm. that may remain off the grid. But why, you know, you seem to be mm. seeing a downward trajectory and getting worse and worse. I mean, I might Mm -hmm. say to you, well, maybe it'll just stay where we're at, sort of three, four, because we are seeing a lot of effort. Do you put it all down to your concerns about the grid and the money? So, no, it's, it's not really about the, the additional money that's not coming in. It's more about the current assets, that the generating assets of the coal power stations that make up 80% of all of our generation of electricity in the country, not being maintained and not having really a plan for when they go offline due to being old. So we have these old assets that have been running for 55, 60 years coming to the mm. end of life. They cannot be extended. They're going to come offline. They're having these catastrophic failures that's leading to all this load shedding by, you know, the milling plant or the, the um, draft plant or the boiler itself having catastrophic failures that, have, that it require the unit to come offline. And those units coming offline of coal power is what's making us have this load shedding primarily that we're having. Yeah. And in terms of those power stations, they're getting to old life and they're going to go um, and basically get taken off over the next five years. And that's the major driver towards load shedding doubling over the next five years. Yeah, so despite efforts to improve maintenance, you're not seeing, bearing in mind the, the ageing of these fleets, uh, you're not seeing things mm. improving as quickly um, as we all and, of course, as our government is hoping. Thank you so much. Sobering lessons, but important for us to hear. <laughs>